Midterm voting are winding down in the U.S. as ballots close in several U.S. states, including key battlegrounds such as Georgia, Ohio, and Florida. The stakes are high. Closely fought contests across the country will determine the balance of power in Congress, state legislatures, and governorships. All 435 seats in the House are up for grabs, as well as 35 Senate seats. The results will be telling of U.S. President Joe Biden's first two years in office and set the tone for the rest of his term. It will also have massive repercussions for the U.S. leader's legislative agenda. For some analysis, we're joined now by Neil Newhouse, partner and co-founder of Public Opinion Strategies, a political survey and polling firm. Neil worked on the presidential campaigns of Republicans John McCain and Mitt Romney. Uh, good day. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, predictions are for a very strong Republican showing. Historically, though, the incumbent party typically underperforms during the midterms. So do you think this year will simply be a continuation of that pattern, or is there something deeper at play? I think it's probably going to be a continuation. There, this is, there's no, no two midterm elections are the same. This is a unique midterm election. Um, six or seven months ago, uh, the trajectory of this election looked like a Republican tsunami. And now, because of the Dobbs decision, because of the um, the abortion issue has really energized Democrats, it now looks like a red wave. And it may not be a huge red wave, but I think it's going to be enough for Republicans to win the House comfortably and I think probably win the Senate. And so just elaborate a bit more then on what you're seeing is the most important issue for voters. As you mentioned, when the Supreme Court overturned abortion rights, it looked like it might be a hot button issue. But more recently, the economy and inflation have come to the fore. Yeah, it's it's economy inflation have been a cons, have been consistent issues during this election cycle. It is, and voters are reminded of it every time they go to, they go to the gas station or the grocery store, and they're paying more. And there's been no relief. Uh, gas prices have gone down, but grocery prices are are still up. Energy prices are up, and it is almost as if the abortion issue and the democratic momentum that we saw in August has stalled and voters are now again refocused on the issue of the economy and inflation cost of living it gives you an idea um democrats have spent you add up all the all the money on behalf of democrats and spent in advertising they spent 44 percent of their tv and online advertising money on the issue of abortion and just six percent on the issue of inflation on cost of living. So you know where they're going and it just hasn't hasn't taken hold. They haven't expanded their issue agenda to really impact voters and to talk to voters where, you know, on issues they're, they're most concerned about. You have unique insight into the Republican machine, and I want to talk about uh, fractions within the Republican Party. Conspiracy theorists, election deniers are on the ballot, and some Americans are dismayed that the party has been taken over by extremists. What do you make of this shift within the GOP to accommodate the far right? And do you think it's strayed too far yeah. from being a traditional political party? I mean, there's no, there's no question. There, there are divisions. What, what unites voters and the Republican Party is their dislike, their antipathy toward Democrats, and that's that's really true across the partisan board here. Um, you, you cannot overestimate the amount of extreme partisan polarization. Now, Eighty percent of Democrats think that Republicans, you know, are going to drive the country into a hole, and eighty percent of Republicans think the Democrats going to do the same thing. But what unites Republicans, whether they're pro-Trump, anti-Trump, uh, election deniers, is uh, the fear of Democrats taking control. And so, you know, we have our own certainly have our own inter-party uh, problems, but in a general election, they they really don't play out as much as they do in in Republican primary elections. And with the embrace then by millions of Americans of these unfounded conspiracy theories and false claims about widespread fraud in 2020, the 2020 presidential race and significant numbers of Republicans on the ballot, President Biden has called the midterms a vote for democracy. Uh, that's not necessarily going to play out in the midterms, but that's got to be a concern for all, all Americans, whether they are red or blue. Well, but I think even... Even voters on our side of the aisle are, are concerned, obviously, about the future of, of democracy. 
um, the Demo- and that may have been President Biden's closing message, but it certainly wasn't the closing message of his candidates across the country. And I think if you're, if you're looking ahead, there are going to be real questions about the White House's leadership and messaging on this midterm election that is they're going to raise questions for Democrats as to whether they want um, Joe Biden on the ballot in 2024. This is you're going to see turmoil in both political parties over the next two years in determining who the, the next nominee is going to be. The Republican National Committee opened five Asian American community centers and outreach facilities for minority groups in swing states. Has the GOP done enough to court Asian American voters? And what role are they going to play in these midterms? I mean, have they have we done enough? No, we've never done enough. Um, One of my candidates, my favorite guys running for office is Lon He Chen who is an Asian who is running for a controller in California. He is obviously tied to the Asian community. We need to do well among those voters. They are a swing constituency. And if there's a failing of our party, it's a failure of of our party leaders to really reach out in a sustained effort to minority groups, Asians, Hispanics, African-Americans. They're all they're going to be key voter groups uh, down the road and key in 2024. All right, we'll have to leave it there for now. Thanks very much for that, Neil. Neil Newhouse, partner and co-founder of Public Opinion Strategies.